morning youtubers um i uh talked to a couple of people and and they were interested they had steel wheel tractors and um uh, they're um interested in taking them to parades and shows and whatnot but um they're we're having trouble of course getting anywhere because it's got these got the old-fashioned steel wheels on it now these wheels look awesome this is the way an old tractor should look in my opinion yeah you can put it on rubber you can find rubber you you can buy the tires you can put that all that stuff on that's fine but uh, there is an alternative way to living with asphalt and a trailer with st on steel now this is what they call spade lugs okay these triangle jobs some of them have angle irons that go all the way across some are tiptoe some are you know just got some some nasty looking lugs on them you know these are fine when you're in the wood in the dirt and on the, in the field but what happens if you want to go um you know across the driveway or go down an asphalt road uh you can't you can't take these um nobody allow you you're they're illegal so um i'm going to show you how to change that so you can keep the steel keep the steel and still have it look good and but be able to ride on asphalt you can keep those on there you can put an over tire on them uh, or a steel ring that goes around the top of them or you can uh, take the the lugs off which is quite a job because there's a bunch of there's two bolts to every one of those lugs that has to come off of there and it's probably going to take a torch and who knows what else to get those things off uh, here's the skid ring is coming off on this one um, but you know you can take the, the bolts off of those and go smooth and put a conveyor belt on them what I've done is I've wrapped these wheels with with rubber and I got them I got the rubber their uh, conveyor belt uh, from a, from a gravel pit it's used a lot of times I get it for two or three bucks a foot so it's pretty cheap um buy as much as you know as i need bring it home and then cut it with a your knife and then install it i'm going to show you here the tractor i'm working on um this is this is my 1020 um according to during 1020 it's a 20 it's a 1930 and i've taken the skid rings off of my steel wheels you can see they're gone it's nice and flat right here so this is better than, of course, the skid rings, but I also I still need a little bit of traction when I'm pulling up on things. This is where I'm going to put the the uh, conveyor belt on. There's holes in them already to where I can bolt on, you know, uh, the rubber, and I'll show you the bolts that I use. But I've measured across here, and I've taken a piece of rope, and I've wrapped a piece of rope around the wheel and held it to the, you know, to the size I need and then um, laid, the, laid the rope out and then me measured it with a slide rule. So that's how I get the length. Uh, I'm not going to really cut it to length real, quite yet. I want to wrap it around the wheel and then cut it. Uh, but i just got to get a strip that's, you know, in this case I'm going to do four and a quarter inches wide. Now the, the, the measurement from here to here, I'm going to make it just a little bit narrow. You don't want it hanging over. You want it just a little bit narrow so the edges you know kind of show a little bit so it looks better um uh, but i'll that's that's the wheel now i'm going to show you we're going to go back in the warm shop here it's about it's about uh you know, 20 degrees out here so we're gonna go back in the shop and i'll show you how to um to cut the the strips we're back in the shop nice and toasty in here and it's frigid out there the wind's blowing and everything so um we're gonna go back here i'm gonna show you how to cut it so we've got here's the here's the conveyor belt strip um i don't know i bought i think this was about uh what i bought was a strip well usually they come about 21 inches wide sometimes they're 24 depends on the conveyor belt 
Uh, this one was narrower. So I've already started cutting the piece off um, off of here. And I've cut mine four and a quarter, which is a nice size for the uh, for the front wheels because uh, I don't have extension rims or anything. It's just you know, you know usual stuff. So here we go. I just I cut most of it all the way down here. Um, what I did was I took a straight edge, measured in every once in a while at about four and a quarter, and connected the dots. Got to have you should have a nice straight line. If you cut it crooked. It looks kind of dumb on the on the when it's on the machine. So um, you want to cut it as nice as you know, as, as sharp, as straight as you can. I used a sharpie to make the marks and went down the edge and made the mark. So um, this is what I use: utility utility knife. Um, make sure it is sharp. You will probably have to change blades two or three times by the time um, you get this all cut because. This stuff has got dirt in it, because that's what it does, it hauls dirt, rock. So it'll dull a blade in no time. So you'll probably get, you know, four or five feet and, you, and you'll have to change the blade. Now, I've got a little sharpening block. Every once in a while, I just dress it, you know, just dress the, the utility knife after it starts to get dull. You don't have to do it too much, just, just keep it sharp. So I put my knee right about here. I grab the strip like this, and you want to pull it apart while you're cutting it. It makes it easier. Now, um, when I bought this, it was outside. It was really cold. I let it make sure you get it inside and you get it, you know, nice and warm because it's more pliable and easy to work with. Otherwise, knee on it, so it holds it down. Grab it, hold, pull it away. You can actually start here, rip it, and here, you know, tearing the cords while I'm cutting it, and. Just work your knife right down through. And there you go. Alright. Now I'm gonna show you what the bolts look like. These are the bolts that I use. These are called elevator bolts. Okay? Elevator bolts have a big wide fat head on them, as you can see. Nice big head, and then it's it is a carriage bolt, so you, it's got a square neck on it. And then I use you're probably going to have to use a washer because the holes in the in the steel wheels are, are quite large. And then the final piece are lock nuts. You've got to use lock nuts. You don't use I've tried everything. I've tried um, you, you might you might be able to use lock except Loctite. It didn't look Loctite, but I like to be able to get these off if I have to. So um, I put these on because um, they work. The the bolt regular bolts with a lock uh, you know lock washer just don't work because you you squeeze it and you squeeze the head down in it and it's not quite really tight. So when you when you lock that baby down, it stays off. I, you know I've had troubles with them falling off. Uh, they'll strip. They'll pull the heads out. The 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 belting will pull down over the head. So, you know, make sure you, you, the hole is slightly smaller than the, the bolt, so when you have to push it in when you're, you know, installing them. And then put the bolt on, and you should be good. Like I said, you can get these at your local hardware store. Um, I think these are Midwest fasteners. Um, they're called elevator bolts, and these are 3 8 by one inch. These are one inch long. You can you can get them longer if you've got thicker rubber, but um, I th I recommend the, uh, the the three quarters of an inch three or th uh, how long are these things? One inch. Yeah, these are one inch long. So one inch long, three eighths thick, and uh, try to get the black ones. The silver ones look kind of dumb. On a, especially on an old rusty tractor, unless you, unless you got to paint it up. I'm putting it on a, I'm just putting it on a barn fresh tractor with you know uh, rust paint on it. So or a rusty finish. These are made in Taiwan. Um, the item number is four seven five six. Um, like I said, I think it's Midwest. They're made in obviously you know made in Taiwan. But, I mean, there's I think there's there's three to a box. So you're going to have to count, 
you know, make sure you have as many, you know, as many as you need, and then make sure you get some washers and lock nuts. Uh, got my little 424s channel locks out here. Or jack. You just got a little tiny bottle jack. Nothing fancy. I'm just gonna lift up one wheel. There we go. All right. We're in the air. We're ready to work. Uh, you'll need a pair of vice grips, needle nose vice grips to grab the head of the carriage bolt and a wrench to turn the the uh, tighten of lo nylock nuts. Nine, this in this case is nine sixteenths. Okay, so we're gonna find right here on the wheel. There's four holes. This is where the skid ring stops and the, and the skid ring starts. There's a, a split right here. So we're gonna start the we're gonna start it right here and work it around. I used a drill and I got I don't know three eighths of an inch bit on there. Not nothing fancy, just enough to start a hole. So we're gonna split the difference here. It goes right in the middle. And I'd say right about there. And then we're gonna drill a hole where I want the bolt to go through the rubber. Right about there. Okay. I don't wanna I don't want to smash my fingers. So that's what we got the that's what I've got these for. I love these vice grips. To hold them and he doesn't smash your fingers. I think the tighter they are, the better they'll bite on the back side. So put now we're going to put the washer and the, the nut on. And it looks like, it looks like I can use a nut without a washer. I think maybe we'll do that. And that way, uh, you don't have to use all the washers. Okay, we're back. Um, I had to, I went and I got, I have a right angle drill. It's a Craftsman, but uh, it's it's pretty good. I put a 916 driver on it. It saves some time here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drill, we're gonna put it on the 916 under here and we're gonna suck it down in. You're gonna watch it sink down in there. There. Now, if you go a little more, I could probably get an impact, but I kind of like to have a wrench just to feel it. And once it starts, it's going to get tough. I'm going to suck it down in there some more. That's pretty good. You want it kind of flush with the rubber. So it's smashed down in the rubber just a little bit. It'll go. Make sure it's biting on the the uh, nylocks too. It's going to be in there long, on there long, in there far enough so that it bites on the nylocks. We're going to take the wheel and we're going to roll it. Put the rubber on there as we go. Try to get as tight on here as you can. Get straight. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut it to length. I want to, I like to cut it just a little bit long because when you're tightening it down, it's going to expand a little bit. So you cut it 
right here, right at the edge. Okay. It's better to cut it actually on the other rubber piece because if you bury that knife and hit the hit the steel rim with it, it'll take the edge right off of it. Okay, I got that cut off. Put it around like so. That makes it nice because you're right exact. Now it might tighten up a little bit. We might have to shave it. But what I'm going to do is then, I got this one in. I'm going to go to the next one. And quite frankly, you really don't need to go every bolt hole. Because on the bolt hole on the wheels, it's every, let's see, one, it's every eight, no, every ten inches from here to here. I think that's too much. We don't need that many. This isn't a traction wheel. This is simply a steering wheel. So we're going to go to one. We're going to skip every other one. We'll go down to this one right here. Drill this one. Make sure you got your rubber on there nice and straight. I would probably go from the inside if you can. That way you're going right through the, the original hole to the other side. So, try to give it as straight as you can. Okay, on this wheel, um, I've been able to keep the cleats, you know, keep the cleats on the wheel, not take them off. But I went to my uh, steel manufacturing guy and he rolled a piece that went all the way over these cleats. And they caught both, both cleats a little bit halfway. And then I put the rubber on, it's got the rubber on top of it. This is, you know, this job's already done. So, um... Uh, this wasn't that the steel wasn't too bad. It was I don't know 100 100 bucks a piece on the wheels or something like that um, You'll have to you know find out what prices are in your local area, but um, I Put a, a square flange with a hole in it and welded it vertically after I got these home I set them slid them over top. I measured it, you know, so that this was slightly larger than the my diameter and um I, what I did is I had them roll the piece, but I didn't have them weld it together. So when I got the, the wheel home, I put the steel over top and measured it correctly, and then I had to cut a little bit off and then welded it. Um, and then had the, and then welded on the, uh, the plates to, to bolt on that. And there's just a, that's just a bolt that goes through that hole and through the cleat on the other side and it'll look like I'm trying to show you here like this here's the bolt bolt with a washer goes through here and bolts into the flange on the other side so that's how I fastened them that way you can have the look of the the uh, the cleat still have you know but still have a safe um, way to roll onto your trailer or on the road with this conveyor belt on um, i'm going to show you the front we did the front and here's what it looks like done on the front i took the skid rings off on this case because it's hard to keep the skid rings i took the skid rings off and I put the elevator bolts through here, and this is all done. Now, uh, these elevator bolts were black. I like those. Unfortunately, I remember when I reordered, I got chromies, so we'll probably, you know, silver ones. So I'm probably going to have to hit those with a little bit of black because I don't want those to shine out. Because the rest of the tractor is kind of antiquish looking. I wanted to keep it, keep it, kind of keep it that way. So, but uh, that's that's what it looks like when it's done. 
and there's the back and this tractor is safe to roll anywhere I can go up and down the the uh, roads I can go up on my trailer not have to worry about the deck and I still regained the look that I wanted with an old with an antique tractor so there you have it If you like this idea, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and, uh, um, and we'll maybe see you at a tractor show someday.